Hey coaches, uh, Joe Salas here. Uh, I'm gonna do uh, basically a season uh, wrap up kind of video. I'm gonna share all my numbers with you and uh, you kind of go through and tell you what, what they mean to me. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna start out by making some excuses. You know, this is our first year in the program and I made two gigantic mistakes. The first one is I did not buy the huddle assist like I have in the past. And the impact of that was uh, you know, didn't have the data, didn't, couldn't do the self-scouting, uh, you know, uh, detailed enough, and, uh, and I think it impacted some of our numbers. The second one, same thing, is, you know, first year in the program, we did not have a consistent, steady stat person, and I waited until the end of the year, that's why this video is so late getting to you, is I waited until the end of the year to go back, go through the film and get all the stats off of it, and that was a, a big mistake also. I got a buddy down in South Carolina, and he is a fanatic about doing his stats off a of video on Saturday because it tells him exactly where he is as far as what's happening with his offense. So uh, the result of both of those is, uh, you know, you kind of take, uh, you know, it, it gets you taking snapshot judgments about how your offense is performing. And I'll give the example, uh, you know, during the hurricane week, I did the, uh, the 92 mesh video, and I was saying that 92 was a productive play for us. And the reality, once, once we crunched the numbers and, and got the cut-ups is, uh, the reality was, number one, I didn't call it enough, and number two, it really wasn't a productive play. It was almost a productive play. It's going to be a productive play. It's, uh, you know, it's way up there on our call sheet when we get down in the red zone, but reality was, I didn't call it enough, and we didn't get, uh, we weren't good enough at it. So I was, what I was probably doing is taking snapshots from practice. You know, in practice, we probably had some good plays, you know, when we're, when we're practicing red zone stuff, but in game, it didn't pan out. If I would have been doing the, uh, the self-scout and been doing, doing the stats every week, I probably would have had a better feel of that. So, I uh, don't want to waste too much time. We're going to go through these numbers real quick. These are starters numbers. These aren't, this does not include the backups. But here's how our numbers broke down. We were run heavy. I have a, I got a, a pretty special quarterback and I have a pretty special tailback. So, so we ended up being run heavy. But, so, so here's how it is. Quarterback. Threw for 1,774 yards. That's pretty typical for me, first year in the offense with a new team. Uh, 1,700 is uh, pretty typical. Second year, you want to be around 2,500. Third year, you want to be around 3,000. All right, so passing-wise, we were typical. Uh, he also rushed for 1,174 yards. That's not typical for us. He, he, he was a special kid. Our F rushed for 1,001 uh, 1, yards, and also had 30 catches for 390 yards. Our X, 49 catches, 394 yards. Our H, nine catches, 72 yards. Our Y, 15 catches, 247 yards. And our Z, uh, 51 catches, 674 yards. That is pretty typical. Uh, you know, if we would have been doing stats, we probably would have got these guys some more catches. Uh, but pretty typical that our X and our Z, they're, gonna, they're the ones that are going to get uh, the majority of the catches. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not a real leech guy. I wish this would have been a little more even, but I'm not a big leech guy, you know, where you got to spread the touches around. I'm more of a, you know, feed the dog kind of guy. I want the dog to get the touches. Uh, uh, our F, that's pretty typical. We're usually going to have a 1,000-yard rusher. But I think it's the first time I've ever had 2,000 yard rushes in one year. Uh, so, so that's where we are numbers wise. Now, I went ahead and broke it down by play, and, and you see I've shot this video a second time, it was too long yesterday. But some of these circles and underlines, I'll explain what's going on there. All right, so run game. We ran the counter 288 times. That's, that's the regular counter to the F, that's the switch with the quarterback. And that's a couple little tags also, including if we called the counter, but the quarterback pulled out and threw the Larry Roger off of it, that's also counted in there. So we were heavy, heavy uh, counter, which is typical for us. But the, the first lesson, and probably one I didn't write on there is, that this immediately shouts to me, we gotta have some plays that protect the counter. And that, that's gonna be a focus of the off season. Uh, zone only ran it three times. Uh, should, obviously should have called it more, but we're gonna, I, I circled that because we're gonna double down on that. The zone is a give me every, you know, every game, and we didn't take advantage of it. We're gonna do a better job next year. 
the dart, very disappointed in the dart, probably going to replace dart with quarterback ISO next year. The power, this includes traditional power out of our goal line set, and also the read power. Uh, was very happy with the read power. Probably going to make some adjustments on the goal line, uh, the goal line set that we're in. Screen game, Larry Roger, 88 times. Uh, probably should have called it more, but it was our top screen. It's always our top screen. Uh, we had nights where we were really great with it. A few teams took it away from us, but honestly, in the first year, uh, you know, we're, we're just, we weren't physically strong enough to really compete with the best teams. Uh, we won five games. We were fourth in the conference, and we, and we made the playoffs, which is what our goal was for the first year. But, uh, you know, when we ran up against the really good teams, we just weren't strong enough yet. And that's our big focus in the offseason. we got to get a lot stronger, uh, you know, close that gap the second year. Uh, so 88 times could should have been more. Uh, Lucy Rose, this is where cut-ups really help. Lucy Rose uh, was not a very effective play for us, but uh, it was there every time. So it's just a matter i got to do a better job of coaching up Larry Rose. That's our tunnel screen. Uh, it's there every time. Got to do a better job of teaching those, those linemen how to get out there and pick up their blocks. Tom and Jerry is our bubble. And this is both of these I want to kick myself. Tom Jerry is our bubble. It's one of the ways we protect counter. Only threw it four times. Average 15 yards a catch uh, on it. So it's one of those we've got to call it a bunch more. That's, that's my fault. Uh, Lita Rita is our traditional screen. Same thing, only threw it five times, averaged 10, uh, 10 yards a catch on, on Lita Rita. Both of those are just plays I gotta call more. It, it's, uh, you know, gotta do a better job in the play calling. On the quick game, three and four is our little, uh, <clears throat> our little snag route that we like versus uh, uh, man coverage. Uh, <laughs> threw it one time, still like the play, still believe in the play. Probably had a few personnel issues with this and just need to call it more, it's still a good play. Five and six is our hitch boot, threw it 16 times, should have thrown it a lot more. Uh, was, a, was an effective play for us. Uh, you know, we, we preached to the quarterback, throw the hitch every time, and he almost did. He probably only pulled the thing and booted three or four times last year. All the other times, if they were given a big cushion, we were taking the hitch and being effective with it. Uh, 79, which is usually, that's our slant shoot combination. This is usually our number one pass. This year it was number two. And, uh, and we really haven't integrated all of our tags into it. So we're going to get a lot better in the slant shoot area the second year, uh, particularly with adding our tags into it. Uh, 11 and 10 is our stick. Uh, it was a good play for us. We only threw it 20 times, should have thrown it a lot more. We had uh, our, our two inside guys are pretty tall, and uh, particular Y was really good on fourth down with the stick calls. Uh, but we got to do, we got to throw that one more also. Our 90s, you see this is uh, crazy looking right here. 90, which is our shallow, only threw it five times. I think that's, and this is my nature. Uh, I think we, we didn't have success early in the season with it like I thought we would, and I kind of just stopped calling it. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to double down on it next year. Uh, 92, we've already talked about that one. You know, I had a snapshot that it was being effective. When, you, when I look at the cut-ups, it's close to being a good play. I mean, we're, we're close to being really effective with it, but we're not effective yet. We're just going to do a better job with it next year and call it more. It's still, you know, when we get to our play calls in, in red zone, it's still way up there. We just didn't get to it enough. Uh, 94 is our Y sale. Uh, eight times, probably going to get rid of 94 and put in a sprint out to take advantage of our quarterback because he's such a threat there on the edge. 95, eight times, uh, like the play, going to double down on it. Uh, got some things that I think will make it a much better play for us, including some personnel things. Uh, 96 ended up being our number one, that's our four verts, uh, ended up being our number one pass this year, 50 times, but, the, but this includes tags. And to be honest with you, we really, didn't, we really didn't develop ourselves to where we were reading the progression like a college team or like Washington State would. We were pretty much, uh, you know, if they were pressing us on the edge, we would go ahead and take that shot, and we got pretty good at it. And then we had a couple tags that we really liked on, on four verts. And probably half of these calls are those tags that we got off of it. So uh, good play for us, ran it a bunch. 
but we got to we got to get ourselves to the next step where we're re, we're progressing through that thing like the college teams do and taking advantage of everything that's there. There was a lot of times that we put the tag on and up in the box they're saying, oh, the seam was you know the seam was wide open. There's got to be running free out there, but but his eyes were on the tag because that's what we had called. So we're close on this one and, and we're gonna get there. Uh, salt and pepper was our little swing RPO. We're going to change the blocking on this to help us protect our, our uh, counter. Uh, this was a good play mainly because we got a good little tailback and, and you know we're just flipping it out to, there to him on the edge. It's almost like a, a long sweep is what it is. But 13 times it'll be called a lot more next year and the, and the blocking change I think will really help our counter. Lightning and thunder, that's our RPO. We're uh, faking into the line and hitting a slant behind the inside backer. Super disappointing this year. Here's what, I, here's what I'm guesstimating, is that, uh, you know, the, the last place that I, that I put this in, it took off from the first time we ran it. It was a great play for us, and it, and it was our number one pass. Uh, you know, uh, number one, it was our number one pass for yards per percent, uh, reception. Uh, but I think the difference there was I had a tall, like a 6'3", six, 6'4", six, quarterback. And here I got a 5'10", five, 5'11", five, quarterback. And I just think it was, it was harder for him to see everything. You know, the tall kid, he could look at it and he, he could see everything and was confident in making that throw. And the kid now, he, he's got to work on being able to see the play better. So we're going to stay with it, but it just, Seven times, it only get called seven times. It just was, it wasn't effective in practice and it wasn't effective in the game. And it's just one of those that we're gonna have to put a lot more work into. So all this, uh, I, I guess, what's the advantage for you? What, how does this help you? Well, if you're first year running the offense, here's some numbers to compare to yourself with. If you're getting ready to go to the offense next year, here's some numbers to compare yourself with. And then the big lesson is don't make the two mistakes I've made. Then doing the stats on Saturday yourself so you get a feel for what's going on. And then uh, having your, or, or however you get to your self-scout, making sure that you're self-scout. I know having huddle assist really helped me in the past on doing the self-scouts and, uh, and, and we'll make sure we have it this year. For me, here's the four things we take away, I take away from it. Number one, it tells me which, which of these plays were good. Uh, number two, it tells me which of these plays do I need to call a whole lot more than I did last year. Uh, number three, it tells me which of these plays do I want to keep, but I got to coach up better. So this, you know, our tunnel screen, it's there. I got to coach it up a lot better. That's, that's one of the examples. Uh, and then number four is which of these, you know, what which of these plays do I need to replace? Part of our, we're going to replace a few things. Part of it is because of our quarterback. He, you know, he's got some skills that we want to get him out there on the edge. We also, we're going to change some things because we got to protect our counter better. So it's telling us those four things. Uh, and maybe that's just some, some ideas for you on how to use these numbers at the end of the year to, to dissect, you know, what you call it being data informed. Uh, you know, I was, I was snapshot informed during the season. And now that we got this data, we're able to really go through and dissect it and make some good decisions. Thank you, coaches.